Praise God for his love and yours forever. Now today I want to talk about a passage in um, Philippians chapter 2 starting verse uh, 15. But uh, we have other verses there up, uh, like uh, above there that we can go through. But it says uh, that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. Now being blameless is of course uh, like to, to, to give people no reason to point at you. You know, in verse uh, in verse 14, it says, Do all things without complaining and disputing. Now, complaining is dissatisfaction, but we should be able to, to, to understand that, yeah, it may be so tough, and this world is really so tough. That's why God prayed for us. But we should be able to be blameless. We should endeavor to be blameless, and we should endure so we can be blameless so that even when they say he's a quitter or she's a quitter or they do like this they speak like this like they will just be fabricating uh, stories but they but you're blameless before god and then before the world and harmless children of god being harmless of course it's just as plain as, as, as it is like being harmless means like you cannot you, you you won't devise anything that can bring heart to another person and then says children of god without fault that's why he says blameless and harmless children of God. Because either you should you your children of God or your children of the world or the devil. So children of God, without fault in the midst of a perverse generation. So this all counts. Don't be in between. There is no being in the world and then being in the Lord. There is no stepping in and one feet like one foot and then stepping out the other. So either you are a child of God who is blameless and harmless without fault or you are in the world justified by the world. Of course, you may be blameless according to the world and without fault according to the world by the world's standards. But it says children of God in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. Now, there is a message that uh, that I recorded a while ago. It's about the, the, the garden, that the garden belongs to the Lord. The garden is not yours. You're just wheat. I'm just wheat. So attacking someone else because they are doing something wrong uh, if it's to correct them but not to attack them because you attack them always to cut them down to show others they are wrong but this is not your garden yeah just talk about there is no need in standing up against someone you can stand up against the wrong for i'm not advocating for wrong that they should keep on doing wrong but i will attack what is wrong wrong but i won't attack the people who are doing the wrong thing why? Because those people, for example, if they are pastors, they are, they, are, they, are, they are heading a church in which they are innocent people. And those innocent people, they still need saving. They still need salvation. So if you cut down whoever they are looking up to by now, because maybe they are still finding their way, you may cut them as well. That's why he says don't remove the weed or else you may remove the good weed as well. Leave the weed there so it will be removed in the very end that's when it will be uprooted and then the weed will be thrown into the furnace so my friend all you have to do is to witness for christ the way you live your life the way you speak the way you make your decisions the way you have your integrity when you say i'll be there on time you're there in this time you'll be there when you say i'll do this you do it it's like i'm not saying when you say something bad and then you do it that 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 that's of course the opposite but we need some sort of discipline. We need to be able to, to witness like, uh, like for our God in all dimensions, in your job, in your, in your career, in your, in your business, in what you say. Are you edifying others or cutting them down? See, I'll give an example. A child in a home will look at their mom or dad or guardian. So when they are still young especially, even when they are grown, Whatever they see the other person doing, they will say, oh, it's okay. So I will also do that. Like no baby is born, like we see so many showcases where the baby, where a small baby comes in and sings or dances. This baby has been influenced by where they have grown up from. If they are being rebuked of every good thing, they will learn to shy away and to do only, only whatever they can do with approval. So that is why in salvation is called witnessing for christ it's not advocating most of you are advocates you go out there to advocate and even you go out there to say you're representing god and you're representing god in a wrong way 
you claim you're doing God's will, but who told you to attack others? And who told you that you have to show it in that way? Well, I know this is like a segment of the other video, and I'm not, I'm not like um, attacking anyone who who attacks others. I'm just saying, the scriptures say, like, do all things without complaining. You know, even you talking about what others are doing wrong is complaining. Do you know that? Yeah, like just talking about it. Just, uh, I mean, like in terms of, for example, in terms of ministry, if you're having a ministry and just talking about what, uh, what others are doing wrong, you may think you're doing God's work. But even Paul writes and says when he was still persecuting the church, he thought he was doing God's work. He thought he was doing God's will. But then he found out that he was wrong. The church is not yours to clear. Salvation is not yours. It's not like a burden for you so that you you'll try to save every every sheep in those congregations. No. Let the whole Lord do his work. Let the Lord preserve the garden as he wants it to, and in the end he will remove the wheat. Even in those gardens where where even in those churches where people go and they are false prophets or they are saying whatever, we, we all see it. We all can see it because our spirits know it. But the Lord is preserving some people from there. Some people who are on truth, on his truth. Some people who carry his grace and love along. Now he says that you may become blameless and harmless children of God. Yeah, I know I've, I've made a repetition of that so many times. But it's very important. Children of God, either you're a child of the Lord or a child of the devil. It's just as simple as that. There is no way in between. There is no cutting line. So, if you want to be a child of God, you need to be blameless and harmless. But emphasize on the harmless. Because most of you will say, oh, I'm blameless. I don't do this. I don't do this. Then you're self-righteous, my friend. You're trying to justify yourself according to your own actions, according to your own uh, standards. But when you attack another person, you may be blamed for their heartbreak. You may be blamed for their failure. You may be blamed for their condemnation. Just It's just as simple as that. It's not only about you. It's about what others will see. Because you're witnessing for Christ. And don't be an advocate. I will just make an emphasis on that. Please, don't be an advocate of Christ. Our God doesn't need defending Unless you're put in that spot where you have to choose between your faith and anything else, then you can say, no, I stand by God. You confess Christ before men without being shy or compromising. But when it comes to any other scenario, we don't need, we don't need, our God doesn't need advocating for. We only need to preach his, his love, grace, and truth. We only need to, 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 to proclaim his gospel unto the world. But he doesn't need defending. He can defend himself. And see, he has put their free will. If someone freely still stays in their old ways and their old nature, if you have corrected them and they cannot, then don't cut them down in any way. There are so many scriptures you may quote and say, this is justified, I have to do like this. But you may be blamed for having this person fall into desperation or fall into a pit where they cannot ever get out from. Because you cut them down with your judgment. Because you broke them down. Now he says, children of God without fault. Without fault. Now we know even if, if there is any small fault, just like we remember, uh, like if, if, if the sacrifice had any, any fault on it in the ancient days of Israel, because we no longer follow that type of system, if it had any fault, it was just put as an example. If the sacrifice had any fault, the priest could even lose their life. They could die because they brought something crooked, something that's not right. So, this is what exactly happens when someone doesn't, doesn't understand exactly what they need to be or where they need to do everything from. So, from which perspective are you doing what you do? So he says, it, this is a crooked and perverse generation. The Lord knows. And through Paul, he writes through his Holy Spirit. The, the, the Lord is Holy Spirit. Among which generation you shine, you, you will shine as lights in the world. Now, there is a verse. Uh, I'll read it from King James Version. It says, in it's, uh, it's, uh, it's still in Philippians 2, verse 3. It says, let nothing be done through strife 
of vain glory, but in loneliness of mind. Okay, loneliness of mind. Let each esteem other better than themselves. Like, in some way, esteem another person better than yourself. Remember, Christ said, the one who wants to be the greatest, let him be the servant of all. Let him be the one who serves others. So if you want to if you want to show how great you are in salvation, be a servant of others. Be as meek and lowly and don't talk when when you shouldn't talk. Remember the Holy Spirit doesn't just give us power to withstand the enemy, but he gives us the power to control ourselves. The Holy Spirit doesn't just give us new speech someone once preached a message and said the holy spirit doesn't give you a new and, and just doesn't just give you a new a new a new tongue or a new a new a new language he helps you control the lang the, 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 like the language that you have already the tongue that you use he helps you control that because see a tongue is is referred to in james as as a small match that can light a big forest so my friend i came to talk about the fact that uh, we need to be uh, blameless children of God and harmless as well. That's why he says um, in verse 4, because I said that it's Philippians chapter 2, but I emphasized verse 15, but you can read through other verses from verse 1 and then you continue. In verse 4 he says, Let each of you look, not on, look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. Now, someone may be uh, walking and uh, f like falling and uh, they, are, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are stumbling but their interest is going to heaven and their interest is having uh, prosperity their interest is all is, is, is everyone making it so when you look out for your own interests you don't care for the interest of others now I'm talking to even to preachers looking out for your own interests for example you bring upon projects and people will start get collecting money for those projects what about their interests what about those people and they're supposed to be built and you say you're witnessing for Christ when do you ever see Christ uh, like uh, like advo like like when do you ever see Christ collecting money or collecting uh, like for for any for any project saying oh we have to go to Capernaum now we need to fundraise we need to do this and this all these practices they are cutting down people and he says you are in a perverse and crooked generation so you ought to be different but then you end up doing whatever is crooked and perverse this is what the world does and this is what you're also doing. Well, I'll make strongly another video about that, but I'm not attacking anyone in particular, but I'll speak out as the Holy Spirit guides me, and I'll speak out as the truth of the Lord is 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 is, is already shown, you know. The world can see, and even even people in, in, uh, in, in Christ can see it as well. But we need to pray to God that gives us the grace to always put others' interests before ours not only for our interests but for the interest of others so verse 5 says the humbled and exalted christ that's just a heading let this be in you which 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 was also in christ jesus who being in form of god did not consider it robbery to be equal with god and being found in appearance as man he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death even the death of the cross you know, Christ put down his life. He laid down his life for us. He never considered himself above. He considered himself a servant. And it was a perverse generation. This generation crucified him. He came to save him. He, he, he came to save the world. And yeah, he had to die by the cross. But the same generation that was crooked and perverse crucified him. Now, if you go on being 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 uh, harmful to others and having like and covering your blame and pre i told you being being blameless means you're not cutting down anyone because cutting down someone you you may be blamed you'll be blamed for uh having them like stumble yeah you may be blamed and you'll be blamed because the lord the lord is going to judge and you'll be blamed for that so being harmless means in you you cannot create anything that can hurt another person in you like um, you you are that child of god that's why there is emphasis on that blameless and harmless children of god in a crooked and perverse generation so my friend just know god is coming back
our Jesus is coming back soon. He's coming back to set everything in order. And then the end will come. But we are going to give accountability for how we witnessed for him. Not for what we said. Not for how we feel we did right. But for how we witnessed for him. Because this is not our salvation. It is his salvation. We need to do it his way. Well, God bless you. I hope this means something to you because it does to me. And I pray that we all live as blameless and harmless children of God in this crooked and perverse generation so that our light can shine in this world. God bless you.